The Inuit head-up display in the A7 D&E &E is the world's most advanced HUD system. Over 500 have been delivered and are in combat squadron service. The digital display computer is fully reprogrammable. A unique feature of the display is a standby sight which is collimated and depressible. The display unit is mounted in the top of the flight instrument panel and collimated symbols presented on the combiner provide the pilot with all the relevant flight and weapon delivery data coincident with the real world situations. En route to the target, the pilot flies the aircraft in the terrain following and navigation mode. In this mode, the flight director demands are satisfied by maneuvering the aircraft to follow the pitch and azimuth deflections of the solid dot. The breakaway cross, which appears from time to time, is occasioned by the bite circuitry of the terrain following elements, indicating a pull-up command in the event of any system element failure or invalidation. Here, the cross appears whenever the aircraft exceeds the Doppler radar bank angle limit. The aircraft is now flying straight and level at about 400 feet, heading of 142 degrees, and the aircraft rolling slightly to the right to satisfy the navigation and terrain following demands. By maintaining the flight path vector superimposed over the flight steering dot, the aircraft follows the correct navigational track and terrain following profile. at about 300 to 400 feet, rolling to satisfy the navigation demand. In the navigation mode, fix updates may be put in by positioning the target aiming graticule, which is slaved to the radar sight line over some prominent fix position. In this instance, the graticule has been superimposed over a tacon station, and radar range and dish angles are fed to the central navigation computer to provide a fixed update of the aircraft's apparent indicated navigation position. Notice the azimuth steering demand is being satisfied by superimposing the flight path vector over the terrain following dot on a heading of 026 degrees. The flexibility of the head-up display is evidenced by its use in attack on targets of opportunity. Here a power station has been sighted that's to be attacked with rockets. The aircraft is diving towards the target at 8 degrees. The target aiming graticule is positioned just below the target and the pilot is pulling up to lay the graticule on the target on a heading of 002 degrees, descending through 3,200 feet. When the target's in range, the solution Q bar appears over the graticule, and from this point onwards, the rockets will hit the point underlying the graticule, diving through 10 degrees, descending to 1,000 feet. And at this height, the mandatory 4G pull-up cross appears, demanding a maximum pull-up within the structural limits of the aircraft. A dive toss attack will be carried out on the bridge and to start the attack, to obtain target position in terms of radar range and deflection from the aircraft, the pilot positions the weapon aiming graticule over the target. The aircraft is rolled to track the azimuth steering line with the flight path vector. Dive angle is 8 degrees. The pull-up anticipation cue is positioned on the azimuth steering line. Descending through 3,000 feet, the target is bracketed by the aiming graticule. The attack is broken off because of insufficient remaining altitude to complete the attack without running into the blast radius of the weapon. The pilot maneuvers the aircraft for a second attack, repositions the aiming graticule. The in-range solution cue has appeared and is moving down the azimuth steering line towards the flight path vector. 
the pilot is pulling towards the solution queue, which flashes as weapon release occurs. The weapon system logic then puts the system into a strafing mode. The in-range strafing bar has appeared over the target aiming graticule. Descending to 300 feet, 100 feet, pulling up 5 degrees, 10 degrees, 15 degrees. This steep dive attack sequence shows the ease with which one can roll onto the target, designate the target with the aiming graticule, and obtain an in-range solution. The pilot pulls towards his solution queue, obtains weapon release, and pulls up through zero degrees pitch angle. The reversionary standby sight can also be used simultaneously with the electronic symbology to check the accuracy of the total system. In the event of electronic failure, either in the central computer or the HUD computer, the standby sight provides a very effective reversionary weapon delivery mode. Calibrated in 50 milliradian rings, the standby sight can be set in flight to any depression angle to give a can delivery for the particular type of weapons carried by the aircraft. In this sequence, the aircraft is in a steep dive attack on the bridge, dropping a stick of bombs along the bridge. The clarity of the symbology against the various types of background is demonstrated. In the radar bombing mode, the target aiming graticule is positioned by means of the radar PPI, and the attack is started through cloud, diving at 28 degrees on a heading of 158 degrees. The solution queue is moving down the azimuth steering line towards the flight path vector, but the pull-up anticipation queue for bomb burst clearance reaches the flight path vector first. Bomb release is inhibited, and the mandatory pull-up cross demand is obeyed the pilot pulls up to 13 degrees to reposition for a further attack. The target graticule has been repositioned by means of the radar PPI. The pilot is satisfying the azimuth steering command with the flight path vector, diving at about 25 degrees. The pull-up anticipation queue is moving up the azimuth steering line. The in-range solution queue has appeared, but the pilot elects to continue the dive to make certain of a visual acquisition before release. Breaking cloud, the graticule overlays the target, the pilot pulls towards the solution queue, and as it intercepts, it flashes to indicate bomb release. Climbing into a steep left-hand turn, the weapon system logic selects strafing mode. The strafing graticule has appeared close to the anticipation pull-up queue. Descending to 1,500 feet, the in-range bar appears over the target graticule, indicating in-range for guns or rockets. Descending further through 800 feet, 500 feet, 400 feet, 300 feet down to 100 feet, flying level before pulling up to clear the pylons ahead, into a climbing turn to the right at about a 10 degree climb angle. In the offset mode, the attack is commenced by positioning the IP marker over the offset IP, which in this instance is the bridge. The pilot is marking the IP with the target marking graticule, and the offset coordinates stored in the computer now give an azimuth steering command to roll the aeroplane to the right to track towards the offset target. The aircraft is making a level turn at a height of 1,000 feet. The offset target marker is now coming into view, and the pilot has almost satisfied the azimuth steering line demand. Flying level, still at 1,000 feet, the pilot approaches the target area and sees that the graticule is not positioned 
over the true target. The graticule is repositioned and the tracking is continued towards the target by bracketing the azimuth steering line with the flight path vector. Straight and level at 900 feet. The heading is 143 degrees. The pull-up anticipation cue is displayed to give adequate bomb burst clearance after the laydown weapon has been dropped. Approaching the target, one or two spurious range lock indications are displayed due to low radar grazing angle. Then a solid radar lock is obtained and the solution cue moves down towards the flight path vector. The solution cue reaches the flight path vector, weapon is released and mandatory pull-up cross appears to give satisfactory bomb burst clearance. Returning to base after the sortie, the pilot selects approach and landing mode. This sequence shows a descent towards the runway on a heading of 348 degrees. The flight path marker overlays the end of the runway to indicate a satisfactory approach touchdown point. Descending through 800 feet, the glide path depression angle is minus 3 degrees standard ILS glide slope. Rate of descent is the standard 500 feet per minute. The flight path marker overlays the touchdown point on the runway for the present approach path. Landing is now achieved.